Would you like to know how to start a book publishing company? I've had the pleasure of doing that. In fact, running one here for probably the past five years, not just probably, it's, it's been that long. We're gonna talk all about that in today's video, so make sure that you stay tuned. This is Self-Publishing with Dale, where you'll learn how to publish books that sell and build an unstoppable author brand. And if you wanna learn more about publishing your own books, building your own brand, and writing in general, make sure that you hit that little subscribe button, hit the little bell notification icon right next to it so you don't miss a single one of these videos. Today's video is sponsored by Thinkific, and if you wanna take your book and turn it into an online course, or even host your lead magnets and gather some emails, Thinkific's the place to do it. You wanna go over and get a free 30-day trial of their pro plan, at dalelinks.com slash thinkific. Again, that's dalelinks.com slash thinkific. Don't miss out on that one, folks. I'm a huge fan of thinkific. There's a good reason why they are a sponsor of this channel. I purposely sought them out. Alrighty, so here's the issue. I get a ton of questions and I try to address each one of them in a sensible fashion. Today might be a little bit more advanced. So if you're a newbie author, you might have to come back to this video time and again. And if you're an experienced author, you haven't quite yet set up a business or started your own publishing company for your books, then you're gonna probably wanna take some notes. Just wanna tell you that I, I hear often, some people say, oh, what do I put in for the imprint? Um, you know, who should I put down for the publisher? Uh, you know, how should I be doing this? And there's so many questions and I've got a few answers, but I do want to kind of give a little bit of a disclaimer. Okay, let's, let's pull the bus over here. I need to talk to everybody. And that is, I am not a lawyer, I'm not a business lawyer. I'm not a tax professional. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share you some tips that have worked for me. I'm not saying they're going to work for you, but for the most part, these are best business practices that if you follow along on something like this, it'll help you kind of piece together what are the first steps to the last steps you're gonna kind of go through. And we're gonna start this one all out with step number one. Step number one, you need to lay out a game plan. Right? Don't just go into this and be like, I'm gonna set up my business entity and I'm gonna go publish some books. Um, that's great, uh, but what's your plan? What's your goals? Why do you want to set up a publishing company? Are you just looking to say, for instance, having a publishing entity on your imprint for your books? So that way you look more professional as opposed to independently published. Um, is this just kind of an ego thing or is it that you want to protect your assets? Because in some instances, people do put these companies together so that way they can protect or at least somewhat protect their personal assets. So go into this with a game plan. You don't want to just go and spend a bunch of money and time into starting up a self-publishing company only to find out, oh man, that was a big waste of money. I'm not making a dime. And that of course brings me to the next point here. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in depth. So stay with me here. Step number two, file an LLC or incorporate. This is going to vary per region. Now I'm just going to kind of speak on my, the way I stepped into things. Back about five years ago, when I did publish my first book, I ended up filing a limited liability corporation. Now, of course, since I'm the only person in there, that makes me the sole proprietor, the uh, single uh, business op or single person business. Okay, um, there are some limitations on these type of things, but for the most part, it ran me about I think sixty dollars when I actually filed it over in Phoenix, Arizona. It was really easy. I, I thought it was going to be super hard. I just, it probably took me more time to just kind of read through all the legalese and hope that I was doing the right thing. But for the most part, what I did was just went in, filled out the paperwork, sent in a check. Believe it or not, they wanted a check in order to file the LLC. And then after that, when they had approved it, I had to end up submitting a, an article uh, to various newspapers and publications. And this is what was required in Arizona. And uh, that was like maybe a few bucks more to kind of send some stuff out to the, the various publications, but I ended up filing the LLC and became official. So the biggest mistake I made was I was hardly making any money at that time. I would say I was probably pulling 30 to $50 per month tops. And it didn't make any sense for you to be spending $60 on an LLC at that time. However, if you're the type of person that is afraid that something might happen, let's say you're putting out a book on how to clean your gun, 
and for some reason something happens that you end up getting sued, well, you know, you're probably going to be in some huge trouble not having at least that limited liability, liability corporation or an incorporation of some sort because they can sue the company and technically anybody can sue you for just about anything. At least you're protecting your assets because you don't technically own those assets, your books, your company owns that. So um, there's other safeguards, but for just simplicity's sake, we're just going to kind of just keep pushing this cart forward. Uh, all that to let you know that if you do invest in an LLC or in a corporation, you may want to discuss this with a business lawyer. Um, get with other people who have walked in a similar path that you want to go in and ask them what their experience is, especially if they're in your region, because chances are likely they'll be able to tell you what works for you. So um, I just wouldn't recommend that you make this the first and foremost thing right out the gate if you haven't even written a single work or published anything. All right, step number three, apply for an employer identification number or EIN. This is another way that you're able to start to gather all of the earnings and expenses. We're going to talk about that in just a minute here. Either way, that EIN is the tax identification number that you're going to use for your business as opposed to your own TIN based on your region or your social security number if you're in the United States. That EIN is actually the easiest process. Uh, I just took the LLC paperwork, I pulled it on out, I filed all the same things for the IRS, and I think it was could have been more than a few weeks before I had the EIN right in my hands and I was made official. So um, protect that paperwork, make sure that you hang on to it. Uh, don't take it too lightly. I want you to kind of protect it like you would your own TIN or your social security number because you get it into the wrong hands, Someone can go and open up a business checking account or a credit card, if you will, and uh, start to pull things out underneath your EIN or your business entity. And that's not a good thing, obviously. The next step, and this is absolutely vital, hire a business, or excuse me, open a business account, bank account. Excuse me, I was starting to jump ahead. You guys probably know where I'm going. Open a business account. That way you can start to send in your funds. One of the easiest things I find as being a publishing, a small publishing house, if you will, how I'm doing things, getting direct deposits. Okay? I don't want things going into my personal account because again, you want to have that going into a business account and then you're going to pay yourself as an employee. Back when I said we were going to kind of lay out a game plan, part of that game plan is also knowing what you're going to pay yourself. Because this isn't just as simple as, well, Dale's just going to go ahead and just dump this all into his personal account and voila, there we go, the LLC is going to protect us. Not necessarily. You can run into some real trouble. I know our CPA, you know, really got uh, on me where they're pretty much saying, you need to start paying yourself instead of just kind of dipping in whatever you want willy nilly and that's just not going to work out. So open that business bank account and speaking of... I already kind of skipped ahead. You folks know this. Step number five, hire a CPA. Sometimes if you need a bookkeeper as well, if you're not very good with tracking a lot of your earnings and expenses, you may want to have that to where a bookkeeper and a CPA can kind of work in tandem and really help you balance out some of those. Um, I hear a lot of people that are going through and doing their own tax returns. Kudos to you. That's awesome. I don't have the time for that. I would rather spend the time and going out networking, writing another book, creating more videos like this. Um, so what I do is I just go through and I just make sure that I'm tracking everything that my CPA needs and requires in order to actually file our taxes from one year to the next and sometimes from quarter to quarter, if you will. If you will a lot today. I feel like I watched a lot of Dusty Rhodes promos today. Alrighty. Tip, step number six. I've already said this a few times. Track all earnings and expenses. Don't take this lightly. Okay? If you're going to be starting your own publishing company for books, you want to make sure that you're tracking every expense from your cover designers to your editors to the merchandise clothing that you're doing to your proof copies. Anything that is business related. Let's say, for instance, uh, when I went out to Los Angeles here recently, that was a business expense when we went to the Vid Summit conference. So I track the travel and, of course, the meals that are taken care of during that time. Now, I let my CPA kind of handle all that stuff. If 
but I make sure down to the penny. I know exactly what my earnings and what my expenses are. Furthermore, as you're tracking those things out, I want you to kind of keep in the back of your head, how much are you paying yourself as an employee and how much are you going to need to put towards a budget for various roles? So say for instance, if you plan on hiring out a cover designer, say every month, then you may want to start to put, that, put aside like say 10% of your earnings for hiring out freelancers, 10% towards uh, your CPA, which you probably wouldn't need that much unless they were a very expensive CPA. But you always wanna kind of put that stuff together. Don't fly blindly into it. Don't just look into your account and say, well, I've got $2,000, oh, that's great, so I can pay myself $1,800, and I'll just leave $200 there for buffer. That's not gonna work. Your business is going to end up going bankrupt before long if you just don't get it to where you, first of all, sh show some discipline and get it to where you're budgeting out everything. You'll thank me at the end of the day, track those earnings and expenses. Uh, of course, the next step is going to be super simple. File your taxes. Okay, I've heard of some people and it makes me cringe when I hear they're not filing their taxes. That will catch up to you, trust me, trust me. And the more money you make, the more money you're going to have to pay into taxes. It sucks, but it's kind of a good problem to have because if you're having to really pay into something like this, then, you know, chances are likely you're becoming more successful and hopefully you've found a good CPA that they're able to kind of minimize your losses and maximize your gains. I'm not trying to say that you're gonna be finding a bunch of loopholes and working the system and trying to evade taxes. That's the whole point of this whole tip right here is pay your taxes. You will thank me. I know sometimes it's just Kelly will look at the tax bill and go, ah. <laughs> and of course, past few years, it just keeps getting progressively worse. Well, why? Because we've been making more every year. And I hope the same thing's gonna happen for you. I've got one last big, very big tip before we start to move on here. I do wanna make just a quick plug. Join me every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Daytime and every Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern Daytime at dailylinks.com slash live. I'm gonna have a live broadcast here on Wednesdays and Saturdays here on YouTube, no exception. And join me on every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Daytime on twitch.tv slash self-publish. We're gonna be doing a podcast uh, episode every week and then you can subscribe for free with your Amazon Prime. Just head over to dailylinks.com slash twitch prime to learn how you can do that and contribute to the channel. Alrighty, so last tip. This one is you know, something everybody should be shooting for. Obviously, you've started out your publishing company, you start to make some earnings, you know, you, you filed your LLC, you got your EIN, you opened up your business account, you hired a certified public accountant, you tracked all your expenses and earnings and you budgeted everything out and you filed your taxes. Well, what comes next? And actually, you're gonna want to make sure you hire and scale. Now, that's not gonna be for everybody. Some people are like, hey, I just wanna be a one-person show. I know Kelly is really big about staying one person. She's real big about solopreneur, but she knows in the back of her mind, she's even expressed that she's gonna probably have to end up hiring out. A good friend of ours as well, big in the YouTube space, Roberto Blake. The guy is highly successful, and he has managed to build a large business just on his own, not hiring out at all. Uh, hence why he kind of likes the whole tag of solopreneur, so there's nothing wrong with that, but if you really want to grow and build your business, you need to start thinking bigger. This is a huge reason. I'm gonna tell a lot of people, and not people are, are very familiar, a good friend of mine and somebody who actually is very responsible for the life of this channel here is Ava Fails, and she's actually been an assistant with me and working with me for the past, ooh, gosh, we're going on three, maybe three and a half years. I'm not sure Ava would have to correct me on this one. And she's starting to hire out some other people to build underneath her team as well. So this team continues to grow because I need that if I want to continue to grow. Otherwise, I've only got so many hours in the day before it's just, I won't be able to do everything myself. Did anything resonate with you? Did you have any kind of questions, concerns, and comments? I definitely would love to hear from you. In the meantime,